awesome. Really? Yeah. Fascinating. There are, there are games that are coming out are if we are going to get specific about it. And videos. There will be some form of a shipment of food to various grocery stores this week. Um, that will be releasing. Releasing on both consoles. Badland, Game of the Year edition. Badland is a multi-award winning side-scrolling action adventure. I'm dying. With innovative physics-based gameplay and stunning atmosphere, graphics, and audio. Everybody's dying. The Game of the Year edition has been redesigned for PS4, PS3, and PS Vita, and Xbox One. Uh, And I'm assuming the Xbox 360. With new analog stick controls and enhanced visuals. Never heard of Badland, have you? No. Um, Ben is especially dying when the law catches up with him for what he's done. For his decisions. (laughs) Again, if you have any wild speculation, let us know. All right, uh, that's everything that will be released on both consoles. Then for PS4 this week, we have uh, two arcade archives. We have Crazy Climber, which is a game released by Nichibutsu in 1980. Players control on the right hand and left hand to overcome various uh, various obstacles and climb to the top of a skyscraper. Don't look down, people. What do you mean by people? Sounds racist. All right. Then we have uh, Ninja Kids, which is also an arcade archive, which was a game released by UPL in 1984. Players controlled Ninja Kun, 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 again, racist, Kun, (laughs) who puts a red hood on and traverses scaffolding consisting of several stairs up, down, left, or right. Players defeat enemies with a shuriken. What is a shuriken? A ninja star. Or a pointy thing. I thought those weren't designed to kill people, but rather to distract them. That or poison them, but not instant stabby death. But, poison. But American movies in the 80s you have were to very a, different. You have to throw it real hard. Or I, mean, I guess you could get lucky and hit, just embed it in the jugular. Or the brain. Yeah. Uh, does anyone else think the Ninja Kid looks like a shy guy from Mario? Yeah, that's what I thought it was at first. I was like, is that shy guy? But it isn't. Kind of is. He doesn't want to show his face. Are ninjas all just shy guys? Are the shy guys all ninjas? <laughs> <laughs> If so, they're terrible ninjas. I know, seriously. They caught them on these video games. You can see them. Yeah. Then we have uh, Arcania, the complete tale, uh, releasing on PS4. Decide the battle of the future of Argon. The empire of Mertana is in turmoil. The power of Mad King has set out to conquer the southern islands, no matter the cost. In these troubled times, you suddenly find yourself in the middle of civil unrest and war, all centered around a mysterious ancient power so some more high Ooh. fantasy to go along if you're not getting your fix with the witcher which we're going to talk about later oh, i got so many fixes going on with it mm. and then we have magicka 2 the next chapter of magicka players ascend from the ruins of Aldrahein to experience a midgard almost wiped wizards a uh, wipe free of wizards after the wizard wars with the few that do remain having either gone mad or extremely hostile towards all others they no. ascend from the flowers of Aldrinon. jeez <laughs> Then we have Roundabout, and this is just a picture of a woman in a hat, and it's not even... That's just a picture, right? Is there an ex- That's an explosion in the background, so she's clearly a cool guy because yeah. she's not looking at it. Roundabout is a 70s B-movie game where you drive a constantly moving limousine. Revolving, Revolving limousine. Removing limousine. That does not sound like a safe way to drive <laughs> if your limousine is just constantly revolving. Well, zero swerving. turn limousine? Exactly. What are we talking about here? I don't know. Pick up pass... Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. Pick up passengers, find secret collectibles, take on a dangerous mission, and fall in love in an open world puzzle adventure. Fall in love. I'm also staying away from the screen. It's hard to see. Yeah. You want to read the next one for us, Larry? Not particularly. Which one? (laughs) Right here. Ultra Street Fighter 4! Super Street Fighter 4 goes ultra! (laughs) New challengers! DiCapri, Alina, Hugo, Poison, and Rolento. I think it's pronounced Poison. Pause and join the fight for a total of 44 characters in this enhanced version of the absolutely iconic fighter. Yeah. Yep. Getting us ready for uh, Street Fighter V, which will be releasing exclusively on PS4 sometime in the future. Future! Future! In a rocket can! Bam, bam, Power bam, thirst! Bam. <laughs> rocket edition! <laughs> <laughs> All right, then releasing on Xbox One, we have Rogue Legacy, and then a game called Beach Buggy Racing. I'm pretty sure I played that on iOS. I don't know if it's the same thing. There's a Beach Buggy Racing on iOS. It's like Mario Kart, but in Beach Buggies. Not as cool. 
<laughs> so that's everything that we'll be releasing on all console, uh, well, on all 8th gen consoles this week. So that was your releases of the week. Releases of the week. Oh, yeah. Let's just ruin all the jingles since Ben's not here. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking about. All right. Well, you got another one to ruin because we are now moving on to the news. Oh, we got news with the podcast guys, and it's coming to you from the podcast guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, first, there has been a reboot of the Need for Speed series announced by EA this week, and this comes from an article over on Gizorama.com written by some super nerd named Luke Croft over here. According to a press release from EA Sports, Need for Speed will be returning to Xbox One, PS4, and PC in the fall of 2015 with its series reboot simply titled Need for Speed. Need for Speed. I've and got the need. The press release went on to read about how it's going to emphasize customization, open world driving, and an authentic urban car culture brought about through partnering with EA's very own car community, speedhunters.com. Guys, Need for Speed is a series that a lot of people loved, but it's pretty much the general consensus that the best Need for Speeds were the Need for Speed Undergrounds. Amen, brother. Because of the customization. What do you guys think? I liked Carbon the best, but it still had a lot of customization. And they said that this one will have customization. They're saying this is going to have the most customization. If it doesn't, because they've said before, we're bringing customization back. If this one doesn't have customization, I'm never even going to pay attention to another announcement for a Need for Speed game. So you better give it to me. Give it to me, baby. Give it to me, right? I uh, Need for Speed is one of the one of the driving series that I'm very into. And the customization aspect, I know, is a big deal to a lot of people. It's a big deal to me in that sense. Not a lot of games really, like is the, that's not very important to me, but in driving games for some reason it is because I want to r- drive around a, uh, a Celtics green uh, uh, car. I always make the General Lee out of an old Charger so that I can slow motion jump over cop cars and say, them Duke boys better stop flapping their arms really fast. Did you guys, uh, did you guys watch the reveal trailer? Yes. Just the teaser trailer. Yeah. It looks cute. It looks like it's going to add some elements of like uh, most wanted into it because it's got the police chase going on. and So if they can bring about the fun of the police chases with the customization of Underground, I'm all over it, man. All over it. All over it. So over it. All so right. all over it. Enveloping it just like a blanket. Just like a big old hug. God, Ben. It's a weird podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable being. I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> anymore. Oh man, <laughs> bad decisions, man. Yeah, gosh, we should have just canceled the show. All right, that was it. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> All right, next item on the list: uh, Red Dead Redemption developers say they are aiming for state-of-the-art graphics. There was actually quite a few things that came out about Red Dead Ooh. Redemption. This Real week. quick, yes. Were those their words? Aiming, yes. aiming, get it. <laughs> Dad jokes. So anyway, um, <laughs> is this officially announced then? Uh, I mean, everyone knows they're working on it. It's uh, Red Dead Redemption developer Rockstar San Diego is setting its sights on, this is according to GameSpot, on, quote, state-of-the-art graphics for its next project. That's according to a job listing for a graphics programmer, which spells out the ways in which Rockstar San Diego is hoping to push things forward with whatever is ne- its next game <coughs> turns out to be. So it doesn't necessarily say for the next Red Dead game, but it's the same studio, and mm. everybody knows that we're going to get another Red Dead game. Mm. Um, what do you guys want to see out of a Red Dead game? I just want to see uh, lots of horses, lots of um, prostitutes, guns, <laughs> zombies. Um, if I had a nickel for every podcast, <laughs> you brought up prostitutes. Oh, they're a very important part. What's of five times thirty-two? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I just want that classic uh, Clint Eastwood with Wild West vibe, and that's I think those games um, have done that really well in the past, and I just want to keep it going. Better graphics, if they can do half as well as they did with Grand Theft Auto Five, kind of not rebooting that franchise, but kind of adding on to it and evolving it from where it was. I'm very, I'm very excited about where this can go. Yeah, uh, go ahead. I never actually played the sequel. Um, so you've only played Revolver, right? Okay. And but there was an aspect of of the sequel that I really enjoyed, and it seems like they're bringing it back from some of the descriptions for job openings and things they're wanting in the game. 
but this this open multiplayer world where you could just do whatever you wanted and just attack random strangers that really appeals to me. Just like Grand Theft Auto. I just want to attack people I don't know for no reason. So I could be looking at me. Are punk. you? Are we still talking about video games? In some ways. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel lucky, punk? Just well, my... <laughs> do you feel lucky? <laughs> do you? Punk? I'm more of a tombstone kind of guy. Lots of good quotes in that one. The diamonds in there. That is that stand is there and bleed. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's Congo. He's gonna do stand there bleeding. I'm your huck. I'm your huckleberry. <laughs> I gotta go back and watch that. Jerk that smoke wagon. And go to work. And hey, then longer. Like, then that quote where he talks about the diamonds being absolutely true. <laughs> oh man, I hope you die in a fire. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things, uh, just from playing The Witcher all this week. Riding around on horseback. I'm just ready to get into that that old west setting. I want to be like riding a horse right beside a train, and like an old stagecoach, and just dun, 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 dun. that's the that's Indiana Jones. But you get the vibe. <laughs> I would also like a very <laughs> racist portrayal of a Native American sidekick. Oh, of course. Red Red Dead will provide that for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll, Phil Spencer make it so. <laughs> yeah, Phil Spencer make it so. Racism three podcasts. What's going on? <laughs> but um. I, uh, I really hope this comes out right around the time of the next season. I know it won't because that's like in a couple months. But in the, in close proximity to a season of uh, Hell on Wheels. I need to get back into that show. Oh, that's a great show. Great show. I have not watched it. Is it on, that's on Netflix, though, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The first, I, the first three seasons are. I've got it in my, it's a, it in my instinct. It's key. an AMC Western. A, mm-hmm. Everything AMC does is gold. I know. Have you guys watched Halt and Catch Fire? No. They put the first season on Netflix and trying to get into it halt and catch fire Mm-mm. sort of like a apple apple kind of thing <laughs> like the fruit no like computers no oh. i don't know if it's actually apple or not but it's I like, feel like a product that catches fire is not a good product product this unless it's, uh, comp is on fire fire it's starter like, logs wait what are you talking about I don't know anymore. I've made some bad dis- decisions. Not like, like Ben's, but <laughs> bad decisions. Ben's just tearing lives. families apart. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Moving on. Too far. Uh, Westerns. There, there was actually some stuff on Reddit, and none of this is confirmed. This was actually a guy who maybe may have just been claiming he knew some stuff, but talking about how uh, John Marston's not going to be the character that you follow. Say it ain't so. In this game. Which he wasn't the character in Red Dead Revolver, was he? No. No. So, I mean, that's not that wouldn't be anything that's totally shocking. And I don't imagine it'll be called Red Dead Redemption Two. What will it be called, Seth? Red Dead Reiteration. Blood Wheels. Mm. Red Dead Spurs. Blood Horse Spurs. I can see Spurs. That's being our word. It it? does. It's like Player Three Podcast. Red Dead Rigamortis. Oh, that's a good one. Red Dead Rigmarole. Retribution. Did you say Rigmarole? Retribution. There you go. I like Retribution. I will not say Rigmarole. <laughs> Crap! <laughs> <laughs> I said, did you say, not will you say. Oh, man. I love you guys. I love you. I'm, I love Western stuff. That's why we're growing awesome facial hair. I'm going to go back to Walmart tonight and get that uh, Clint Eastwood series that I didn't buy last week. Nice. My classic thing where I walk around the store and then I put it down. I had two things I was going to buy last week. I know that and the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy. Yes, I put both of them down. <laughs> <laughs> um, next item on the list. <laughs> this has got a weird feel to it, and I haven't decided if I like it or not. You do. Uh, you do. So, so there's a Fifty Shades of Grey joke right there. Oh, but I'm not okay. Make I'm it. glad. I'm glad you were thinking that direction. All right, <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida confirms that a Bloodborne expansion DLC is coming. This is a, uh, according to a tweet from Shuhei Yoshida himself. We heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Now, this was one of your E3 predictions, Seth. Yeah, shut up. And you get absolutely no credit for it. All right? We'll see. No! We'll <laughs> see. Was it see. They announced we'll it already. They're, They're going to unannounce it. You re- can't... It's just the timing, man. Like, I, I guessed it. When's E3? It's in June. In June. So I was, a month, I was what, maybe a couple weeks off. I should get a quarter of a point for each week. I think he should get a tenth of a point for the whole thing. I will go. I will take. I will accept no less than a quarter of a point. <laughs> All right, we'll give you a quarter of a point, but you've got to surrender two of your other predictions. No. <laughs> uh, Shuhei Yoshida. Poppycock. <laughs> Shuhei Yoshida. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say poppy on the air. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's a bad you, decision. That's how you test positive for opiates. 
All right, Shuhei Yoshida's tweet says, So I've been asked by many people if we are making DLC for Bloodborne. I can say an expansion is coming. More info later this year. Like at E3? Huh? I mean, that is later this year. Here's the thing. If they if they announce full details... Then I'll get three quarters Bloodborne, of a point. We'll give you three quarters of a point. Deal? You like that? You okay with that? Uh, he's a, little, a stickler. Seems he's a little, a little low to me. Hmm? I think he should get a full point. <laughs> I'm going the opposite hey. direction of what you think. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, I think you should lose Larry, two points. I like, I, like what Larry's doing. <laughs> I like what Larry's doing today. He's zigging, he's zagging. I'm, I'm dodging all the bullets. Dodge. <laughs> all right. We'll give you a full point if they announce full details about the Bloodborne DLC. Full, full details. details. Full details. Which means release date and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm like Diz is home just rolling down a mountain. <laughs> you don't know where it's going to end up. <laughs> Nobody knew. Nobody. All right, uh, so Bloodborne has been highly successful. In fact, more successful than even PlayStation had figured that it would be. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it can't be more successful than PlayStation. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> it was a weird uh, place to uh, I meant to say that Sony uh, even believed it. They they came out a couple weeks ago and just said, like, we're, we're shocked by how popular the Bloodborne series, uh, this Bloodborne game has been. Why do you think that is? Because this is a game that was... Uh, we all talked about it before and how we didn't really think it would be that much of a system seller because it's kind of a niche title. Why do you think so many people have attached themselves to uh, to this game? I th I think being niche worked to its advantage. I think that they didn't try to be something they weren't. They just did what they do really well. Uh, I think a lot of games lately have just been trying to expand and get their hands in too much. and Instead, just, just scale back. Do what you're going to do. I agree with that. I think that this game... I think one of the things that they did by well by not going and just doing another Dark Souls game is that they came up with this whole new aesthetic. Um, it's not totally original. Nothing is anymore. We live in a very postmodern era. But, <laughs> um, you know, it kind of takes uh, the Victorian thing, makes it real dark, real gothic, real gritty. Um, everybody's covered in blood all the time. They're all, it's, it's, not, it's not medieval. It's not Victorian. It kind of blends genre. Um, but it kind of goes back to the same gameplay as the Dark Souls series. And I think it People want to beat that challenge. You know, people people in America these days they want competition, and you want to be the best that you can. And really, like I see, uh, I was I was reading a lot of Witcher forums uh, this week, kind of looking into how to get things started because this is my first Witcher game, and people were uh, talking about what difficulty they're going to start the game on, and tons of people in here are like, I really think I'm going to put it on uh, Death March on the Witcher because I beat Bloodborne. At the, like, that's the standard right now that people like Bloodborne. Some mentioned Dark Souls, but everyone's talking about Bloodborne and how they're getting through it or what kind of success they've had with it. It's just this huge challenge, and I think thing games like that really set the bar for um, you know major challenges in gaming. People are people are proud of what they've done with it. Yeah, you've got easy, medium, hard, finding the Holy Grail, beating Bloodborne. That's the difficulty scale right. that we're at right now. Um, I think a couple of things maybe factored into the success of it. First of all, there really hasn't been outside of the Order eighteen eighty six, and we've the issues with that have been well documented. Um, there hasn't really been an exclusive IP for the PlayStation that people have attached themselves to. So you've got how many PlayStations sold at this point? Twenty two million, something like that. You've got twenty two million PlayStation owners out there looking to attach themselves to something and say. Only us on PlayStation can have this experience, and Bloodborne comes along, and they can finally say that, and it's a product that they can be proud of. And I also think the the fact that it was niche and the fact that it's difficult plays along with people. One of the things I'd be interested in seeing is how many people were like me, bought the game, played it, and never beat it. Because I feel like a lot of people entered into that saying, I want the challenge, and then weren't up to the challenge because they're little weenies. I'm kind of scared that I'm going to be one of those guys because I had to set my Witcher difficulty back. Yeah. Well, and the two games parallel, at least in a combat form, and and the thing is, the Witcher's easier because it's constantly moving you forward and telling you where it is that you need to go in order to move the story forward, which is something, a luxury you don't have in Bloodborne. You just have to find your way in Bloodborne and hope you can figure out where you're at and where you're going. Um, as much as I enjoyed the combat system of it, the frustration level that was there 
and that I felt in the original Dark Souls was there even more maximized because I felt like I had a firm grasp of the combat system, and that's why I had trouble <laughs> moving forward in it when I got stuck. Because I was like, I don't want to go back to this because I feel like I'm good enough to move forward, but yet I keep dying. So I'm obviously not, and I don't have the time to put into it to become better at it. That's what I'm saying. Uh, they, they came out with a sale from GameStop. You can get, or actually Amazon has it just straight up at $40. Uh, GameStop, if you have the app, you can download a coupon or you can get it online for $20 off of the $60 new price. And that's a great deal. And I've been wanting to get this game and try it out kind of like you've done, Luke. But I don't want to pay top dollar for it. At the same time, this is coming out the same week that The Witcher released, and that's a full time job. I'm gonna have that game for two years probably before I end up getting all the way through doing what I want to do with it. Yeah, and honestly, if I had to choose between the two experiences, and from my opinion and the games that I like to play, I'd pick The Witcher over Bloodborne at this point. Not because The Witcher is necessarily a better game, but just because it matches my play style and what I like out of a game more. Because I'll admit it, I like having my hand held through some of it like and telling me where I need to go and what level I need to be to do it rather than just figuring it out. I don't have time to just go in and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I love that they're supporting this with DLC and that this is probably going to end up becoming a franchise because it is sold so well. Because PlayStation... You know, you've got MLB The Show that gives you a sports game that's exclusive. You've got um, you've got Uncharted that is an adventure game that's exclusive. Now you've got this super difficult uh, Bloodborne from software title that is exclusive to your your platform. And so, the more of those that we can obtain, and by we I mean PlayStation, <laughs> <laughs> the more of those that PlayStation can obtain and uh, and and market the more people they are going to attract to their platform. We still don't have that. PlayStation still doesn't have the first person. Uh, I'm talking about it like it's my favorite team or something. Basketball uh, is my favorite sport. <laughs> uh, PlayStation doesn't have the first person shooter stuff locked down, and they probably won't because Halo is just going to dominate in that for all time. But uh, but in all these other genres, they're starting to uh, have a, a very solid foothold that's going to give them an advantage moving forward. Uh, next item on the list, Techland has put development of first-person hack-and-slash title Hell Raid on hold to rework it and put more emphasis on developing the Dying Light franchise. This is according to an article from VideoGamer.com, and as soon as it opens, I will read to you what this article says. By the way, Milky513 says low, rele uh, low release week and lack of quality titles for the entire month it was released. And most importantly, no major game-breaking glitches in terms of why Bloodborne was successful. That is also true. Yeah. And companies are starting to figure out, like, we don't have to release into the fall in the holiday season to be successful. People are going to buy these games whenever they come out. Um, in fact, not releasing during the holidays helps because I don't have to make decisions. Yeah, and it, it's just so congested. Just get yourself a GameStop credit card, get all the games you want on there, and then... Uh, Seriously, if you've got a GameStop, a GameStop <laughs> credit card, call us. We will we will give you an intervention, all right? We love you, and we care about you, and you need to cut that thing up, all right? Don't use just it. Just cut it up, and then uh, file for bankruptcy, and then never pay it back. What's up? Boom, beat the system. Boom, boom, baby. And then when the bankruptcy goes through, then you get another GameStop credit card. Start it all over it again. Going. It's the Keep cycle. It going. Welcome to Economics 3 Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Techland has scrapped development on first-person hack and slash Hell Raid after it was decided that the game would fail to live up to the developer's expectations. The game had previously been due to launch on PS4, Xbox One, and PC later this year, but it has now been sent back to the drawing board in an effort to start development anew. And then the project's abandonment, however, will allow Techland to focus its resources on expanding hit zombie franchise Dying Light, which launched to commercial success earlier this year. So, two parts interplaying within this story. First is, let's start first with the scrapping of this first-person hack-and-slash title, Hell Raid. Um, according to the article, it's not completely scrapped. However, it is on hold indefinitely. Uh, I think the game was supposed to release in the fall, sometime in 2015. And now it's not going to be released then. Um, and they're doing that so that they can go and just rework it, right? Yeah, well, I kind of get the vibe that they've just, they've, they're just they restarting from scratch almost. <laughs> just all the way back to the beginning. But I don't know. 
Um, it's neat to see. I don't know if you're going to delay a game for that reason. It, it's good that they're not giving you a new release date. So mm-hmm. it, this game isn't going to get pushed back three or four more times. It's just we'll let you know where things are. Uh, I don't know. More games need to take that approach. And so before we go blaming this entirely on the success of Dying Light, I think it's important for us to note that when a when a company has <coughs> the gall to say, Hey, all this stuff we poured resources into, we're going to scrap because it just doesn't meet our expectations. Like you need to applaud a company like that because they didn't get to this point at no cost to them. Like they've already poured money and resources into, into hell raid and they're having to kind of eat that cost now to go back and, and rework everything and scrap it and restart development. Um, but the other aspect of this is the success of another game that really benefited from its release window with dying light. Larry, you love Dying Light. I cannot help but give effusive praise to Dying Light. <laughs> there we go. He learned a new word today. What was that word? Effusive. Effusive. Just, just overwhelmingly joyous mm. praise for something. I like it. Uh, but yeah, I, I sting and <laughs> love that game. It's so much fun. Um, and I'm excited that they are going to be devoting resources to a sequel. I'm hoping that maybe I'll buy that game early enough that Diz and Ben will actually play it with me instead well, of just well, saying Diz they'll play it with me. <laughs> Diz can't play it with you. He passed away. He passed away. But man, if he gets his life back in order, <laughs> then he can then he can uh, get back on the games. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't remember where I was going. You forgot about that, didn't you? <laughs> I did. I, you know, it's hard to just accept that they're gone, you know? But... Oh gosh, that that creeped me out. <laughs> oh gosh, your wife's home. <laughs> Hello. Um, but yeah, so. love that game. Excited that they're devoting time to it. Uh, so good, so good. Yeah, I. Uh, you traded that in, didn't you? <coughs> no, no, I I, tra- I, yeah, did. yeah. It, I I just I've had it for a week. Tried it out. It just wasn't my thing. Uh, That's kind of how I feel about it. But the movement system in a first-person <laughs> game like that didn't make sense to me. Like, it was very hard for me to get a grasp on. And I'm sure if I'd have stuck with it longer, it would have made more sense, but I just didn't want to. And your person gets better at moving as you go. Which would help as well. But there was, like, a mission where I had to jump on, like, a pole, just one, like, the top of a pole. Yeah. And I kept falling off of it, and I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. Forget <laughs> this. I, I traded my whole Xbox in with the game in it. It's like, I don't even <laughs> want to take it out. Just give me another Xbox. <laughs> um, this one's tainted. <laughs> But it's always good to see like a franchise get born, and that's what we've seen with Dying Light. And the the fact they're moving resources to it means like Dying Light Two is only going to be better. I would assume. You okay. hope. <laughs> well, for your sake, I don't. I probably won't try to jump back into it. Before Diz passed away in that tragic mobile home accident, <laughs> he uh, his one complaint with the game that I heard. He may have had others, but there's a really weird problem with the game where once you beat the game. Typically in an open world like that, you beat the game and then you have some freedom to go explore and do the rest of mm-hmm. whatever you can do. But there are areas that you can no longer access after after completing the game. In Dying Light? Yeah. No. He said there's no story reason why you shouldn't be able to access them. Just That's what I was going to ask. Okay. Just a poor problem. Uh, if, I, if I can put a spoiler hat on real quick. They spoiler do that. hat. They do that on kind of funny games. Oh. So I'm doing it now. So spoiler hat. We're spoilers on about, uh, about Dying Light. You beat it, right? No. Spoiler hat off. Should I block my ears? I'll no, block no, no. My ears. No, it was ah. it was going to be a question for you because I'm not positive if that's if what I was going to say was true. But we just won't we won't explore that. I was kind of hoping to have friends to play it with, and I don't. So, <laughs> well, you got to have friends first, hey, Larry. I that game uh, as a Destiny player, huh? <laughs> what God Sometimes this name. mic shocks me in the face. Oh. Oh, I thought you were reacting to something else. <laughs> like, what, no, what, what you were doing under the table. Yeah, I know how it feels to have friends that don't want to play games with you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I tried. I tried. I got on with you one time last week. It took me my game a while to update, but mm. then it just didn't work any other day for me. Uh-huh. You texted me Saturday, uh-huh. but I was already in the middle of something Saturday. Uh, we've been playing some Halo lately during we your have hours been of the day. Some- during what? During your hours of the day. Yeah. So where have you been? I played with you the other day. He did play. I with know. Us. Didn't you play with us both times this week? No, nah, just the one. Oh. We also played with Sam McGee. Shout out Sam McGee. Sam and McGee. your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Don't finish this. <laughs> Comma. It's a bad decision. I'm not gonna. Do Much it. like Ben's choices. 
<laughs> He's gonna listen to this podcast and He won't uh, he won't know what we're talking about. He oh, knows exactly he? what we're talking about. I don't know what we're talking about. What are we talking <laughs> about? No, don't that ask answer. that and don't Oh no, I'm it. sorry, don't answer that. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Phil Spencer. Phil, 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 Phil. Friend Phil. of the show. <laughs> Phil, 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 Phil. <laughs> Says that they will not be abandoning the Kinect. This is from an article from GameSpot. Despite Microsoft removing Kinect from some Xbox One bundles, the company remains committed to the camera technology, according to executive Phil Spencer. He says in a new interview that Microsoft has no plan to abandon Kinect, explaining that it remains a, quote, great part of the overall Xbox ecosystem. It's not abandoned, Spencer told Edge via Games Radar, which we got via GameSpot, which now you are receiving via the Player 3 podcast. Which we received from Kevin Bacon. That's Six some, degrees of separation. That's some fourth hand news right there. That's right, baby. What's up? What's up? All right. What's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Larry, they're not abandoning the Connect. Uh it'd be nice to see them have plans to actually utilize it instead of just plans to not abandon it. And they've done a, they're doing a couple of things. I know that they're messed with the movie software kind of thing, but I want to see it used. The the thing about that article was the that they didn't want to abandon, and I don't know if this was what Phil Spencer meant or if it was just a poor choice of words in the article, that they didn't want to abandon the camera technology behind it. I believe that to an extent. However, I think it's been very abundantly clear with the Kinect on the Xbox One that the voice recognition features are far more highly utilized than the camera features. And... I can see them going the way of maybe just releasing some sort of mid-level technology where it's just a microphone that you put on your Xbox that can do the voice commands without necessarily needing the camera to do hand gestures and facial recognition and all that stuff. But here's the thing. This is why I take this quote with a grain of salt because you can go to Walmart, you can go to GameStop, you can go to Amazon, you can go anywhere online – and they are still trying to sell you an Xbox with a Kinect in the box. There is That is still a bundle option, and it costs $100 or $150 more than the option that doesn't come with the Kinect. So f- with that in mind, they are still trying to make money off of the Kinect, off of sales of this thing. Why would Phil Spencer come out while those things are still on the shelves and say, yeah, we're just going to scrap that, no more, no more support on that, and then all of a sudden your whole entire inventory of Kinect becomes – null and void because nobody's going to purchase something that they don't believe well that they know the company is not going to back any longer so that's just one of those like marketing things like we're not abandoning the connect mostly because we're still trying to sell it (laughs) and we've made a bunch of them that are still sitting on shelves well you still need the connect for games like just dance 2015 just dance 2014 um connect sports Connect no no connect sports rival right oh yeah yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that you're was right Xbox one you're right um that's about it right is that it <laughs> I'm uh, sure there's more Fantasia sure music unlimited was that what yeah, it was yeah called? it I don't was know. and uh there's a there's a sport there's an exercise program on there you can use it's fun mm, you can uh, I like to say Xbox being John Stamos ah uh, yeah it's an attractive man. Very attractive man. That's really all I've used Bing for. My whole entire Bing search history is just John Stamos John on Stamos, various John days. John Stamos, John Stamos, John Stamos on Wednesday, John Stamos on Thursday, John, John Stamos, Stamos on... Oikos commercial unedited. <laughs> unedited. The red two or the red band <laughs> version. John Stamos on February third, nineteen ninety four. What kind of announcement plan? And this isn't in the show notes because I just thought of it. What kind? Uh, what do you want to see Xbox do with the Kinect that would make you think like, okay, they really do still believe in this technology? Because uh... here's the thing. There's a good way, and I'll say this while you're thinking. There, there's a good way of doing it, of, of continuing the support. And then there's a bad way of doing it. Here's the bad way of doing it. It is by taking a successful franchise of yours and tacking on some sort of bullcrap connect functionality in it that you require somebody to use. Like they do with the 360 sometimes. Yes. Or like anyone that has ever tried to implement any kind of hardware feature in their consoles has done where they just throw in something useless and make it necessary for you to do and an option you can't turn off. 
That's the bad way to do it. So what would be a good way of them going about trying to support it? I'd like to see it implemented in optional ways in other games. Like, I would love in Titanfall, instead of me having to hit buttons, I could just be like, Titan, eject. And it yeah, does it. Yeah. That'd be sweet. Kind of like a, like in a, the Alien game, for all its faults, you could... Uh, like if you would, you could lean your head to turn around, like to look around a corner or something like that. Or if you spoke too loudly, um, the alien might turn around and look in your direction, something like that. So it's a game that affects how you actually, not only how you play with a controller, but how you play, how you actually exist in the room with the system. Yeah, I, uh, I like those sorts of things. The things that are kind of non-intrusive and that you naturally do while you're playing games anyway. Um, part of the reason I didn't buy a Kinect, I actually got received one and subsequently returned it when I got it in the last gen, is because I didn't want to be up and moving when I played games, as lazy as that sounds. I wanted to sit on the couch, use a controller. I enjoy it as much. I, I would love for them to continue to support it, just more as a peripheral, mm-hmm. more periphery. Yeah. I, I hope they continue to support it. and I, there's people more creative than me working at Microsoft who can figure out ways to do it. I just I hope they don't go the route of just requiring it for the sake of requiring it. But the fact of the matter is, is there are way more Xbox Ones out in the wilderness right now without Connects than there are with Connects, and so there's no reason for developers to develop for it. There's not an install base for it. So they they shot themselves in the foot by not sticking with the original plan of just you know letting people. Making people buy the connect with it. Yeah. And I'm kind of like, I don't know. I get that it's an incredible piece of technology, but is it really that pricey that it makes a $150 difference? I would imagine so. It's a $100 difference in the bundle. Um, it's 150 by itself new. Is it a hundred? I think it is because aren't all the bundles now 349 but the connect bundle still 499 Oh, yes. Oh, that might have changed. That might have changed that so, after, after that sale they had at the beginning of the year. But on the one hand, I think it is. Essentially, there's two cameras in there that give the give it depth of field, um, and then the microphone with the sensitive voice recognition technology built into it. Like, and then just the software side of it, and the fact that there is support that has to get like they have to pay a Connect team to develop for it and to continue to support it. Like, maybe that's how they. That's what they need to do is just find a way to make it more affordable. Then, now maybe they can't. I guess you can't. Eventually, you can, but yeah. But that's the whole reason they had to drop it was to make the consoles more affordable so they could catch up in sales. What I would like to see with the microphone technology, like, what if when they announced the Xbox Slim, the microphone's just built in on the Xbox? There's no extra cord you've got to run or you've got to set it. It's just in your box attached on the on the xbox or you just make it a software thing and you just use the mic controller mic uh, yeah that'd be kind of like the playstation which couldn't you you yeah you can use voice commands yeah with through your headphones on the playstation even side. if you don't have a playstation camera but again it's like that weird middle ground of we want people to own the connect but we won't give them the features otherwise that we could support through the headset because here's the thing if i keep saying here's the thing here's there's a the lot thing. of things there's a lot of things to consider in talking about this. You're like Adrian Monk. I don't have diabetes. He doesn't diabetes. have diabetes. <laughs> um, crap, what was I saying? Diabetes. Diabetes. Oh, here's the thing. <laughs> yeah, but which thing was I talking about? No, um, if, people, if you give people the option of using voice commands through a headset, ultimately the mindset's going to say, well, I mean, it kind of sucks having to hunt down my controller and the headset. So, what if I just bought the Connect? Like, it would be stepping stones, stepping stones to get there. And then, let's say they put the microphone into the Xbox Slim and they just build it right in. Then they can lower the price of the camera Connect mm. because it doesn't have to support microphone technology. It can just be the cameras. Or they make it even more sensitive. By requiring you to spend another five hundred dollars on a sensor suit that you wear to operate the Connect. Yes, the pain station, as Diz called it. <laughs> Wonderful. Before he died in that horrible accident. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, boo boo. 
Next item on the list. Microsoft is bringing back the white Xbox with a special edition Halo Master Chief Collection bundle. I love white Xboxes. I know. it's. Uh, I, there must be something marketing-wise where this is just like a cyclical thing. Like with the Xbox 360, it was white. And then it became black. And then it became black and everyone was like, I need that black Xbox. Mm-hmm. And now I need the white Xbox and the white PlayStation. That white PlayStation is mm. a thing of beauty. Have the black, have the white Xbox with the white PlayStation on top of mm-hmm. it. Everybody wanted to be the White Ranger. Oh, gosh, that's racist, Larry. So <laughs> I don't think there's anything actually like aesthetically different about it except for the color of it. Like it doesn't have Halo branding or anything like that. It's the same exact console you get in the Sunset Overdrive bundle. Um, but it does come bundled with the Master Chief Collection, and it does bring back the white Xbox that you know you would otherwise have to buy the Sunset Overdrive bundle to get. Um, my question to you is this. What color or game theme would you want your console to be? If you could just pick whatever it would be, or th- any theme at all. It doesn't necessarily have to be a game. Oh, I would like some shade of teal. Teal's hot right now. Mm. <laughs> it's very hot right now. Would it match your room? No. That's not what you want, though. You want that thing sticking out so people know. That's yeah. a two-console man right there. That's a two-console man. I want a red PlayStation. You may possibly be able to get that. Teal? I uh, know, baby. We'll see. I'll, I've already got one, so hopefully nothing happens to my PlayStation that would require me to get a new nah, PlayStation. No, you just trade that thing in. You buy your Metal Gear Solid 5 fan of pain. I'm not crazy about actually actually themed systems. Like, like I, just, I just don't like the vibe. That Call of Duty Advanced Warfare uh, terabyte hard drive console, it's for the birds. First of all, that console was hideous. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Even the Halo console. I love Halo, but like when the last Halo 4 console they had with kind of the Forerunner um, metallic theme on the outside of it, the kind of skin, I don't like it. Empty Vile says he wants this to be gold for his gangster brethren. My brethren. <laughs> uh, I, if, if I stick... I didn't understand the question when I first read it. I didn't know if you meant Halo wise or otherwise. So Halo wise, I would like like a Cortana themed Xbox, not necessarily in appearance, but it's just a hologram. Yes, <laughs> and and like the uh, sort of like, like they had an R two Xbox, and it made R two sounds. So like this this console talks to you and just belittles you when you fail and stuff. That'd be good <laughs> when it fails. So like you turn it on, it's like welcome back, Chief. And uh, I'm trying to think of other Cortana quotes. Well, if they're if they're gonna May implement the force be with you, yes. If, if they could implement that into uh, the Windows 10 integration, then that could be very possible. Oh, Which will then, be coming post summer. Not to move on, just then even the voice commands get uh, Cortana modified, and so it talks back to you. That'd be neat. And then we got a whole, uh, oh, what was that movie? Her. 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 We got a whole her situation where mm-hmm. we got. I can't intervention. wait. I can't wait for this. We got to have an intervention because Larry's falling in love with his Xbox and has become unfaithful. Until Cortana's just talking to me all the time. Like if I'm just asleep and she's like, "Hey, babe, can I talk to you for a second? I want to watch that movie again. I, I own it. You turn the Xbox off by uh, quoting Master Chief at the end of Halo Three, like, "Wake, <laughs> wake me when you need me. Wake me." When you need it won't, me. And then it gets to a point where it won't let you turn it off until you say, I love you. <laughs> I am not hanging up this phone. I, I will not turn myself off until you tell me you love me. And, and then it gets to the point where it argues with you about who has to say it first. Uh, you say it. I no, I love you more. Oh. No, I love you more. And then you just turn her off like, shut up. <laughs> and then when you turn it back on, it's super pissed at you and won't do anything <laughs> for you. <laughs> it does the opposite of what you... Uh, Cortana, save this game. <laughs> Deleting all game progress. Right, right, right. <laughs> Cortana is... You would rather play these games than hang out with me? She's just super <laughs> passive aggressive. <laughs> game time's up. It's time for the talk. Here we go. <laughs> so yeah, that's my perfect... My show's on. <laughs> my show's on. <laughs> Let me just change the channel here real fast. Uh, I won't, don't ever you... want Cortana coming to, play to the Xbox now. <laughs> From a purely aesthetic standpoint, I'd like to see a Titanfall Xbox because that Titanfall controller was beautiful. Yeah. I loved it. Um, Empty Vials wants to know what happens when you get a girlfriend. What's Cortana think? Mm, you got to you gotta go to your, her place. You got to. And you hope gotta. that she can't get to you through the cloud. Well, Cortana automatically makes an avatar for her, and it's this hideous thing with a mustache. Mm. 
you got to put a piece of tape over the Kinect camera, mm-hmm. or else Cortana's just going to be watching you. And the microphones. But the tape only blurs it. And you got to be Who's careful that with what you? you watch, too, because, like, what if you end up, like, leaving the television on, and then, you know, Showtime comes up late at night, <laughs> oh, and, no. and some crazy um, stuff comes on. Skinamax. Skinamax comes on, and she's like, babe, do we need to talk? You have a problem, I think. Because maybe you muted her or something like that, and she can't hear you. This is getting deep. I don't know, man. Relationships can be ruined that way. <laughs> so, so she automatically calls your mom to discuss your problem. Right, with right, her. right, right. She yeah. calls. She calls mom. You know, your family comes over and talks to you. They're like, you know, I wasn't. Wa- y- I w- you lose virility that way, son, and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, true, true story. That happens. Oh man. <laughs> Moving on. Scientific <laughs> fact. Um. I'm not. I'm with you on the theme deck, uh, the theme consoles. I don't like them. Not necessarily from an aesthetic standpoint. I think some look really good, but just in the sense of like, there's going to be a co- a game that comes out later that I'm going to like more than the game that I bought this console for, and so it's just kind of a revolving door. What I would love is a good old Boston Celtics themed console. All right, just give me that, and I'll be all about it. I I like themed consoles aesthetically, but. Every time one comes out, I already own a console, and I'm not going to buy another one just because it looks prettier. That's good, because that is not a healthy way to have a relationship either. Just when a prettier one comes along. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. You leave Cortana and go get someone else. Anyway, Windows 10's coming next summer. (laughs) That may be the worst segue you've ever had. (laughs) Why? I was giving you guys relationship advice. I like it. Um, we've already talked extensively about Cortana and uh, you can Larry. Do it a little more if you wanted to, huh? We could even talk about it a little more if you wanted. But to. no, this is a, this is getting creepy. This is getting this is getting a, a Leanna size creepy to me at this point. Leanna. <laughs> and now Cortana's like wondering why you find her so creepy. She's calling and talking about it with her friends. Like, how does she have friends? I feel like he just doesn't respect me the way that he used to. <laughs> So, like, your Cortana is talking to other Cortana's consoles. Right, right. And then when, when your friends get on, their Cortana talks to them about your relationship problems with your Cortana. Right, and then kind of, like, people start swapping Cortanas. Sort of like they're, they're, they're swinging, basically. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's how sister wives are born, too. <laughs> <laughs> Bigger train wreck than that train does his mobile home accidentally hit when it flew down that mountain unexpectedly. Bigger train wreck than the disgrace Ben did to his (laughs) (laughs) career. (laughs) Larry, talk to me about Windows 10, please. Uh, It's it's a version of Windows. Um, They skipped 9. For some... God knows what reason. I read somewhere that it was because there are so many programs that are set up to, in the coding, they do stuff with Windows 9, anything that starts with the words Windows 9, so 95, 98, all that does such and such, and it would cause a lot of trouble if there was a Windows 9. That's bull crap. I don't know if it's true. That's bull but crap. I refuse to believe it. Windows 10, I, I'm I'm sort of excited to but see well, it. Hold on one second. Okay, all right, one, all, right, all, right, all right. One and zero are the two numbers you use for binary code. Is that not going to mess stuff up? That's not how things work. I uh, That's not how this works. Only talking by here. That's not how any of this works. If you can understand me in English right now, it's because you are hearing in tongues. Awesome. Look at you. Pentecostal. Amazing. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, yesterday was Pentecost Sunday. Welcome to Pentecostal 3 Podcast. <laughs> well, it still works. B3B. Did you know that? Yes. Did you celebrate that at church? No. Man, what a bunch of heathens. C- continue. <laughs> With Windows 10. I'm sorry, I cut you off. I'm sort of excited for it. Not really. But I'm very excited for cross-platform play. So people who buy stuff on PC that's also on Xbox One, we can play together. And kick their tails. Destroy them. Oh, we can finally we can finally prove whether we are better than PC Master Race. What if, let's say Halo 5 releases on PC, which, which <laughs> it won't. Um, but let's say it did. And they had a weekend where you put a console team together to play against PC players. And finally, for the for the first time ever, we can finally dictate who is supreme overall. Yes. 
Phil Spencer, make it happen. Make it so, Phil Spencer. Release release Phil, Halo Phil, Five Phil, on PC. Phil, <laughs> Phil, Phil. Release Halo Five on PC just for that weekend, and then take it away from them. That's what we're asking for. Um, I'm excited about uh, remote play from my Windows 10 devices, much like the computer we're streaming on right now. It's running Windows 8 right now, but we'll get the free upgrade to Windows 10. It'll be great. Um, let's see. Let's move on. We've got reviews. Reviews for you. We have reviews, reviews for you. Da, da, da. We have got reviews for you. We have got reviews for you. And then we've got, well, it's only one review, so. Yeah, it's really only, yeah. The Witcher 3 came out last week. A lot of people liked that game. Some people didn't. But those people are dumb heads, and we don't talk about them. Seth. Talk to me. You talk to me. I will. About The Witcher. Tell me about it. Oh, man, I'm in love with it. Um, <clears throat> it's Much just, like he is with the cocoa. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm in love with the cocoa. <laughs> um, it's just, it's just, it's huge, and it's it's almost dauntingly so. Um, I got the House of Wolves expansion and The Witcher on the same day last week, Tuesday, at launch. And <clears throat> I played The Witcher for like an hour. I played it on the sec- on a, what is it, Blood and Broken Bones, second to hardest difficulty. It was pretty tough. I kind of like played for an hour and stopped just to kind of like get my toes in the water, kind of feel it out a little bit. Got on Destiny. I played Destiny for almost the whole week straight. And um, toes, toes yeah, I, I, I started to put two and two together finally. But um, it's it's I kind of I was daunted by how big The Witcher is and how much there is to it, and by how, it is a challenge. I mean, I uh, even put the the difficulty down on that to the second to easiest. It's still pretty tough. It, you will be out leveled by many things. Um, and sometimes you'll have trouble finding what to do in a quest, but <clears throat> it's almost like, it's just like reading a huge fantasy novel. Huge. One that you're going to read for 200 hours if you really want to. A choose your own adventure fantasy <clears throat> novel where you aren't even going to read several hundred pages of it. Right. And every, the great thing about it is, and you've said this several times today to me and Larry, is that almost everything is voice acted. Yeah. So I haven't, have you come across anything that you just have to read other than... Like notes, things other, that you other would than, naturally have to read. Other than notes and books, things like that, yeah. I'm, like, Geralt is just, he's talking to himself, but it keeps you from having to read his mental, di- or his mental, his, his inner monologue. Um, so it's just like, God, your your decisions matter. How you converse with people, you, you've got to kind of master the art of conversation. conversation. I think it'll help me in real life, too. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> how you deal with people Everything is political, and it affects what you do. And you don't have to read about it. You don't. <clears throat> some things are timed. Have you come across any timed things? Yet? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where you like you have a certain yeah. amount, like kinda, a telltale, kind of like a telltale game. You got a split second to make a decision, and that affects you know however much more of the game that you want to play. Certain things. I don't. Know, it's just. It's daunting. It, it's kind of sc- scary. But it's a lot of fun, and I I I want again. I wanted to get Bloodborne this week because of the deal going on. I think it's until the thirty first. Maybe they'll come out with a sale, hopefully, later on. But I can't because I'm going to be spending way too much time on this game and on Destiny. Yeah, I. Uh, one of the things I appreciate about the game is that while it's big, it limits what you're exposed to at times so that you don't just have this giant map filled with question marks that you only get a section of the map at first to kind of feel things out, figure it out, level up you know learn the combat system and all that sort of stuff and so because with those sorts of games i just i get so overwhelmed and the fact that you just here's your little area to start out in get it all figured out then we'll go introduce you to more areas as the game goes along Uh, i i like that a lot um with this being the third iteration of a game i i have only felt lost a couple times and the first and is when uh you're having to Talk, make decisions about how events in the past went when you're talking to uh, the guy mm-hmm. who calls you gentleman all the time. Yeah, what was yeah. the gentleman like? I don't remember what his name was, but uh, I, that's really the only time I felt completely lost. Like with everything else, I've kind of connected dots here and there. There's, there's a lot of, there's a deep, deep mythology, a deep lore to the game that you can tell is fleshed out and thought out. But that and, part's not overwhelming. Yeah, and they actually make it really accessible. Uh, you didn't know this until I told you today. But when you buy the disc, they actually come with a little Witcher compendium, this little little booklet 
Uh, you get some stickers and you get a make a big map of the world. Um, but the booklet kind of gives you the rundown of the story thus far and about some of the main characters. Um, you even get like ancient history of the world and kind of how these monsters came to be into the world through this collision of dimensions or something like that. And um, it's all really interesting, really intriguing. Um, but it's that part is actually not daunting, and you can even access you know characters that you run across from other games that you haven't necessarily met thus far, and kind of get their background um, in game, just mm-hmm. like in the bestiary. It's really accessible. It's just it's huge. Yeah, and you have the option to learn as much as you want to learn in dialogue as well. Like if you just want to keep the conversation moving. You can just always select the yellow highlighted stuff, but if you want a little more backstory, you can select the white. And again, every single every single side quest that we've come across, at least, is voice acted, and so you don't have to read it. And it's it, it just gives you the story in a way that is good. That like the characters are really interesting. Um, I think Geralt himself. You know, you mentioned uh, <coughs> you mentioned how the game can be political, and I think that's made possible by the fact that Geralt is not just a skilled warrior, but he, he's a good talker. Like he's good with people and you get to kind of decide his personality as you go through the game. Are you going to be the guy that makes people pay for all of your jobs? Or are you going to be a guy who likes to help people out? Uh, you get options to kill people or let them live. (laughs) Well, that's the classic RPG element is, you know, you're deciding which role you're going to be playing. Um, what the great thing about this is that you're not just reading it. Yeah, you know, you're just you're not kind of deciding and sitting there reading through this. You're seeing it. One of, uh, another thing I like about that aspect is there's no meter to tell you what kind of character you are. Right. You know, so many RPGs will be like, all right, you do something good, your your good rating will go up. If you do something bad, it'll move. You know, past the, left to center on it, and it's like, no, it's it's like the real world where you make your decisions and you just have to either instantly live with the consequences of those decisions or figure out what the consequences of that decision are in the future. Right. Um, and not every, not everything that you do, not every decision you make plays out in the way that you think it would. Like if you allow somebody to live or if you, if you choose to kill somebody or choose a certain dialogue option, like just cause you, you pick the high road doesn't necessarily mean the people that you're interacting with are going to take the high road. Maybe they're going to, want to fight you regardless or something like that. Not, it's not, it's not cookie cutter to me. So, um, what else do you like about the game? Um, yeah, I just love how open it is. I love the gameplay is smooth, but it's a little glitchy and that comes naturally with a big world like this. Assassin's Creed has those problems. Grand Theft Auto has those problems sometimes in terms of character movement. Um, but I like how Bloodborne-esque it is and the dodging system, things like that. It just, Again, it's so big. It's for me just coming into a Witcher game. It's so new that you know, it's it's kind of hard to get used to at first. And when you're jumping back and forth between different kinds of games like Destiny and this and Grand Theft Auto, you know, you kind of get your your brain gets a little jumbled sometimes. Mm-hmm. But the game does a great job of actually. What one thing I really do enjoy is the HUD. Um, certain times when you're not doing something, your HUD disappears or part of it does, kind of depending on what you're doing mm-hmm. at the time. But whenever you need, um, you know, your butt, like when you're in combat, your combat buttons appear. When you're not, they disappear. They're not there all the time. It's very Assassin's Creed like in, in those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, where it's all, it's all accessible. That, uh, that's another thing I enjoy, especially with the combat, is like it's challenging, yet the controls make sense. Right. Uh, to me. Um, and I was I was nervous about the the crafting and the alchemy system being really. Uh, I'm deep. always nervous uh, about that. <laughs> just because, again, it's about just having so much to read. And but you know, as long as you're gathering everything that you can gather, the alchemy and crafting system kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so uh, it I think it's only really as deep as you want to make it as well because. Maybe as we go on in the game, those things are going to be much more necessary for us to to learn how to do. But well, it depends on your difficulty too, upon which you play. Yeah, that's uh, true. Yeah, that's very true. Um, but there are some issues. You know, you you brought up the way that it runs, um, and it has it definitely has some frame rate issues that they've acknowledged. Um, to me, Geralt just 
I don't even know how to describe what he controls. I keep saying it's like a tank, but tanks have weight. But Geralt feels like he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's the he's so light, he almost controls like he's bogged yeah. down. Like you just you're trying to, <clears throat> you're trying to do something at one point, and you think you're doing it, and then all of a sudden you go the totally opposite way for some reason, something like that. Mm-hmm. It's like it's almost like he's fighting you. <laughs> yeah, like it gets especially difficult. Like if you've got a a room that has several different things that you can loot, trying to aim Geralt at the thing you're trying to loot to get him to do it. Because especially with the right stick, like you can just barely. It's so sensitive you barely. T- and I've lowered mine all the way. Mm-hmm. Um, you can barely tap it, and he'll do like a 180 turn without an animation to show you a 180 turn. And so, uh, which I've heard that's just kind of indicative of of CD Projekt Red games. Like they've never gotten the weight of their characters down to uh, like a mastery level. And so, but I can live with it because the combat can be so satisfying at times. Um, and then I don't know if you've noticed this, but that the font in the menus is so tiny. Oh yeah, yeah. And I I sit probably like five feet away from my screen, and I have trouble reading things sometimes. I go in and read a lot of the books and uh, journals that you pick up just at random. Like I'll go and loot a bookshelf, get a couple books off, kind of per, like peruse through them. And I get significant eye strain just sitting there and, you know, when I'm playing for a couple hours at a time, three or four, to um, just sit there. You read a few of those books and all of a sudden you're, whoa, you're blinking. Yeah. I've got, I play on a 55 inch TV and I'm like, I'm still having to get way up on it. And they've, all these issues that were mentioned really, except for Geralt's weightlessness, they've come out and said that they're going to fix. There's also a lot of loading screens. Um, and not necessarily as you're traversing the world. I don't think I've ever encountered a loading screen traversing mainly the world. during cutscenes. But during cutscenes, it'll be like five clips, and then load, then five more clips, then load, and uh, and so that that can get kind of tedious and annoying. But uh, in a word, how would you describe The Witcher Three? Vast. I was gonna say huge. Huge. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's easy, but it it is true. It's this the world's what one point five times the size of Grand Theft Auto Five. Yeah, it's, it takes uh, you fifteen minutes to ride from one side to the other. No, forty. I think is, is it forty? I, I was reading somewhere. I think I watched a video where someone said it took forty, which is nuts. Um, but yeah, it's and it, they even put The Witcher Two like on top of The Witcher Three map, and it was just this tiny little thing, and that was supposedly a pretty big game at the time, a few years ago when it came out, however long it's been. But um, the game is just huge, again, dauntingly so. But I think it's one of those that I don't think anyone should expect to play through in a couple weeks and trade it in to GameStop to get their money back, which you will probably do. I bought it digital. I can't. That's right. Good good job. I did it. I did that so I would force myself <laughs> to play through it. But now but I don't feel like I need to force I myself. I think that this is Back one of those digital. things that you should keep on your shelf for like a couple of years and just kind of go back to it sometimes when you want something to do and just play some side missions. Go through the story. Take your time. Um, again, it's like a book, and it's, it's like something that you can go back to and actively participate in. And not like many RPGs where you're just sitting there and reading very much like a book. You're taking part in it. You're just choosing a conversation, and then the conversation takes place for you. Mm-hmm. I love in sections of the map, like, uh, I don't, I'm terrible with names, but there's a section of the map where there's a shoreline, and that shoreline is just covered in question marks of undiscovered locations. And that can be bandit hideouts, monster, uh, like monster homes or, or different side missions that are available. But like all of these little question marks in this, and it just shows you, I can do either what's in my quest log right now, or I can just go ride around and unlock and find what stuff is, which is what I've been doing a lot of lately. Cause mm. riding around on your horse is so fun. I love Roach. My favorite. He's my favorite character so far. <laughs> Trust the old Roach. You need to get some saddlebags for him. That'll increase the amount of things you can carry. Oh, yeah. But there's nothing like seeing that big. You need to put your griffin head back onto it. Yeah, because you've got You've got your, uh, whatever that lady. The noon, the noon wraith. Yeah, yeah, the noon wraith. Um, but you, when you're riding around, you got a big old griffin head sitting right next to you. This rotting thing gives you a character boost. Just dangling off the side of your horse, and you just you ride through a little village, and it looks like it's just a total BA. That stands for a bad word. <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, we, indeed. We've got some responses about um, about it. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, Empty Vials talks about how the only thing that frustrates him is that there are some NPCs that have these Witcher potions, and then Geralt, after three games, still has to find the recipes for different <laughs> right. concoctions. Um, and then, um, let's see, what else did he say? Oh, it's funny. He brings up the action log, like, last in very, a very short time. I didn't realize there was an action log today until I saw a screenshot of something describing how the HUD in The Witcher works. That's how fast that it appears in the bottom left hand corner and disappears hmm. and what you're doing. I didn't I didn't even know it was there. Um, another another big thing with me in the at least in the combat system is the lock on system I think is terrible. Like I'd agree. And where you go to lock on and it locks on a, on an enemy like the furthest enemy away from you and not the one directly in front of you. But all of these things are like little things that can be tweaked. One of the things I want us to talk about and then Larry you this will be something you can jump back in on. Oh, okay. Um, CD wow. Project Red, you got you got your game physical. I bought mine digital. The physical came with a lot of stuff in it. It came with. I, I kind of got the disc. I didn't realize. I thought they would give you like a digital soundtrack. I knew that it came with it, but I kind of picked up the disc and I was like, "This is heavy." The box. It's got your game disc. It's got your CD with however many tracks on there. And you get like a couple of the wolf necklace stickers, like the wolf's head, the uh, Geralt's necklace looks the like. Guy. His medallion. Whatever. Medallion. Medallion. Um, you get the stickers. You get a big map. I'm stacking up on game. I've got my Grand Theft Auto Five map. I've got my Skyrim map, which is actually a nice kind of canvas paper. Beautiful. I'm going to make a map room one day. Um, you get that. You just get a lot of extra stuff, and you even get that little uh, memo that I think Ben tweeted out or you know, threw out there to the world where CD Projekt Red just basically thanks you for buying their game. And, um, you know, they're telling you we're giving you all this stuff, all that extra free DLC that you don't see a physical copy of, like the beard growth and all this stuff. That they don't want to charge you for it. They will charge you for some, like, the 30-plus hours of story mission that you can get in the season pass if you want to. But that's well worth it if you want to drop 30 bucks. I just, I just this game was a bargain. $60 at 200-plus hours of gameplay, <laughs> depending on how long you want to take and do things, plus replayability. I don't even think I can do the math to see how much that costs per hour. <laughs> I don't think it's that hard. <laughs> I don't think the math is that hard. That's my point. How many hours? 600? No, 200. 200. 200 divided by... 60. 60, right? yeah. Hold on. Just get your phone out. I got you, man. I got I you. I don't want to use my phone. I got you. 200 divided by 60. Sorry. That's not right. No. It would be See, s- it's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> so 30 cents. You, you're paying 30 cents an hour. 30 cents an hour. Jeez, I'm crow. That's a deal. <laughs> Jeez, I'm crow. That is a deal. <laughs> um, you, you've got to at least read about and see the way that CD Projekt Red has handled this release. What are your thoughts on it? What a great benevolent company. And people should learn from this. I hope this game is hugely successful, and I, I, I hope this company just continues to just rake in mounds and mounds of money because they're not trying to take advantage of people. They're giving you quality product for what you're paying them. I would agree, but I want to bring up this point. Oh my gosh. Bring it up to Luke. Bring it Welcome up to, to Pessimism 3 Podcast. Um, you guys, you've heard of Bernie Sanders, the guy that's going to be running for president, Democratic guy. No. And Rand Paul, have you heard of Rand Paul? Yes. Oh, everybody's heard of Rand Paul. And so many people look at these two men and they're like, they're like, man, what great politicians who, <laughs> while most people are out on the campaign trail, hy- making the, the, the presidential campaign hype train roll, these, these men are still doing their jobs in Congress. You know, Rand Paul just filibustered the Patriot Act, filibustered the crap out of it. Bernie Sanders has been, you know, introducing bills and all this sort of stuff. And everyone's like, man, look at how great a guys they are. They're not campaigning. They're just out there. They're just out there doing their job. Here's the thing. That is their campaign, guys. They are doing their job as a mode of campaign because they know people are going to look at them and say, look at these great guys just doing their job. That's an angle in House of Cards that happens at one point. But See? I prefer it. I'm not saying it's, and that was the point I was going to get to, was CD Projekt Red, they may be great guys, it may be a great company, but part of this is them playing up the fact that they've gotten so much love. Absolutely, in a post-Unity world, 
yeah. this is a great angle to go Well, in a post every release we've pooped on in the last <laughs> year and a half, this this is the way to go. But this this is marketing. This is their like no everything. I would love I would love to see how many people tweeted out a picture of that thank you note. And I talked about it too. And I think it's if you're gonna market, this is the way to market by showing your consumers that you care about them. <laughs> but if we're calling a spade a spade, they're being a good they're being good guy company because good guy company sells. How many people bought this game just because they wanted to support a company that you know? was treating the customers right. Ben even said himself he would buy two copies of the game. <laughs> and there's a lot of people, I think, that would, would believe that. Like, there are going to be so few used used sales of this game because people want to support CD Projekt Red. It's a good move by them. And it's a it's acceptable. If you're going to do business, that's the way to do business. When I eventually buy this game, I'll buy it new because their marketing works on me. And that's fine. So I'm being contrarian, but I'm completely agreeing at the same time. I just don't, I just don't want us to get so wrapped up because companies thank people for buying their game all the time. Sometimes it's in post game credits or something, you know, something like that. But like companies do that all the time. That's nothing new. But the fact that they did pour so many, so much money into filling up that case and making it feel like you bought a physical copy of it, I kind of regret not buying a physical copy of it now. It's not too late. I still think I'm going to go back and buy a Master Chief Collection disc in like a year when it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, it's too late, dude. I'm not. I'm not yeah, spending that money. Um, but anyway, you gotta have that map. Think about how good this room would look covered in video game maps. I like it. <laughs> I like it. A and lot. then we torch it. With us in it, we just can't handle Diz being gone <laughs> and Ben being gone, and we just die in a fire. Like I've been telling you two over and over this podcast. Yep. All right, moving on to everyone's favorite segment. The random question. Oh, it's the, the random week. question random of the week, y'all. Random question of the week. Random question of the week, y'all. Of the week. Random question. For the month, for the week. Boop, boop. <laughs> <laughs> if you were tasked to spoof a video game, what would you spoof and how would you do it? I have a plethora of answers prepared. A plethora. All right. Lay one on us. A, a veritable cornucopia of answers. Uh, first, uh, this one's more of a crossover than a spoof, but the Bloodborne identity. So you replace the main <laughs> character of Bloodborne with uh, Matt Damon from the Bourne identity, Jason Bourne, if you will. Uh, and you lose all of the abilities of your character, and you just really struggle to get through this thing with hand-to-hand -hand combat and limited handgun ammo. Mm. Mm. I had an idea earlier. What was it? Mm, don't remember. I'm you didn't tell me. Crap. Am I the keeper of your thoughts? Yes. Um, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, uh, hit it off the tee. Uh, call Dookie. <laughs> oh, that's what it was. Dude, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It was something else. But in the, in the very first game, it's real old school and you're like just pooping in an outhouse. Uh -huh. And then as years go on and new iterations of the game come out, ultimately you find you're in a mech suit and you've <laughs> got to like traverse this wide open expanse in order to get to the bathroom before you poop your pants. However, the more mech suit abilities you equip, the longer it'll take you to remove your clothing and a higher possibility you have of pooping your pants. Mm -hmm. uh, My game is sort of similarly in that vein. It's a S-word simulator. And <laughs> Sword. Right. <laughs> well, Codename Sword. Uh, so in Sword Simulator, what you'll do is um, <laughs> go into uh, various maps. Like uh, you could go to an outhouse, you could go to a public restroom, things like that. And you just got to poop it out. And, you know, there are various types of poops. We all know this. Are you playing as the um, one who has to poop or as the poop itself? You're playing as the pooper. Oh, okay. The pooper. But you're trying to get the poop out. And there will probably be various camera angles that you can go to, you know, above. Uh. Selfie. Um, you know, people take toilet selfies, toilet selfies all the time. No, you can go underneath, like so. That it's like the poop is dropping down. I'm searching this on Instagram. Um, <laughs> can you do? The, can you do the GoPro? Uh, oh, of view, course. Where it is, the GoPro is on the go. Right on, on the, the sword. On the, go, on the sword. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, basically, you could sometimes it could be a button masher. You know, if you got a real mean one trying to come out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If if it's like an explosion. Then you know I'm sure gameplay will be effective. maybe like rotation of the joystick something like that. Um, oh, there's like stealth missions where you got to do it in the middle of the night and not wake up anybody else in the house. Yeah, something like that. Like you got to creep. 
Yeah, well, I'm saying even when you're on the toilet, like you got to strategically clench the cheeks. Oh, to be quiet. Yeah, so yeah. Not, not let too much out at one time. Like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your mom wakes up and comes in. She's like, "I just cleaned this bathroom." What was that smell? <laughs> and you're sleepwalking, and you pooped in the tub. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, this was really or the cleanest. Maybe, maybe, I hate maybe, when that happens. Maybe, <laughs> maybe you just pooped the bed. Oh mm. no! <laughs> no, everyone's the worst nightmare. Well, sometimes you got to take that risk. And then you could even have reward maps where you can go and poop in exotic places, like poop off a cliff into the ocean. <laughs> and, like, you control the poop, like, with the spin and stuff like that, sort of like when you're playing golf on the video games. It's like, you take into account the wind speed and things like that. You're trying to get it, like, into a tiny, like, into your oh. ex-girlfriend's lunch. She's on a boat in the Caribbean. Yeah. And you're trying to poop into her lunch off a cliff into this tiny little kayak. I like it. I like mm. it. Play another one on us. Uh, Need for Speed, where you play a meth addict, <laughs> uh, and so you're constantly trying to fight your your craving for speed. Um, you're you're there are lots of instances where you're being pursued by the police, as everyone loves from a Need for Speed game. But what really makes it is the heavy customization. You have various levels of power you can apply to your skin. You can you can select each individual tooth for whether or not the meth has driven it from your mouth, uh, bloodshot eyes or yellowed eyes. Um, just uh, how sunken in your stomach is revealing how much of your rib cage you want. It's heavy customization. If you become a high enough leveled meth addict, do you get hired to be in those uh, public service announcements? Um, depends on how you play the RPG side of the game. You ever wonder if those people get paid and then just go buy more meth? <laughs> <laughs> I don't wonder so much as no. <laughs> oh, you got any more, Seth? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Because I only have one. I think I I've just got two more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, he go has ahead, two man. more. He's bending it up uh, today, huh? Game of Thrones. Um, is where this another bathroom one? Yes, <laughs> sort of. Uh, uh, sort of. There, there's less ah. focus on the bathroom, though. It's just that every king in the land wants to lay claim to this incredible porcelain toilet where you, you poop. But uh, you play an Italian player. Game of the porcelain thrones. Uh, who's trying to ra- rise from obscurity. To, to take a seat on a throne. It's very political. You wind up trying to win the heart of a princess, even though you're just a lowly plumber, um, in, or, in order for you to even be considered royalty to participate in this fight for this, this throne. What about Minecraft, where you design the most elaborate bathrooms in the world? Uh, like unnecessarily elaborate? Oh, yeah, incredibly <laughs> elaborate. Look, my bathroom has 40 TVs on it, and they're all on CNN. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta watch the news all the time, man. What else you got? Uh, this is my last one. All right, go ahead. Uh, a spoof on the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, the Elder Scrolls for Oblivious. You play an aspiring hero trying to save the world from darkness, but you you have a very you you're just completely oblivious to what's actually happening in the world. You don't understand current events. You don't notice key things in the story, and instead you plunge the world into darkness. Hmm. Mm. What about a game where uh, the, the, I don't know what it would spoof? You go. I'm gonna figure out a game I can attach this to. <laughs> um. All right. You just get like a, a car, uh, a racing game where just the worst cars of all time. You got the Yugo. You get like uh, a couple mopeds out, yeah, things yeah. like that. I mean, you could really do this kind of thing in Grand Theft Auto, but I think you could really like go all out and do like a Forza style simulator or a Gran Turismo with just like. <clears throat> I don't even know what brand makes Geo. Is Geo just a brand by itself? I think so. Geo. Metro Geo. Some Geo trackers. Um, I don't know. Um, what if um, what if it's a game called Dying Light where really you you have a grandmother who's in a nursing home and you're just uh, you got to come up with the most convincing excuses to not go visit her? <laughs> wow. <laughs> what dying light? Oh my gosh! Yeah, like your grandma. <laughs> yeah, I get it. She's withering away in You're nothingness. So she well. has, she has no more friends in the world. She won't call AARP to start, stop sending her stuff for her husband because he passed along. But that just makes her feel like he's still around. She always orders two combos at the at the fast food restaurant, and then places one in the passenger seat and never gets eaten. Her car smells terrible. <laughs> just rotting KFC. <laughs> well, if you go to McDonald's, that food doesn't rot. Well, Grandma needs to start going to McDonald's <laughs> for, her, for her dates, all right? Did that get too dark for you, Larry? Got pretty dark. 
Did it get too, light. That wasn't my question. Did it get too dark for you? Oh no, no. It's hard to. It's hard for that to happen. Um, the one I can't find. Maybe you can help me out. Uh, what about a game that simulates being a blind guy, and it's just, it's a black screen, perfect, and you have to wear your headphones. Perfect dark. Oh yes, and you gotta tap the X button to use your, and you have to use your thumbstick to. For the the blind stick that you walk around with, what is that so, called? So you, cane. A cane. So you play the blind a, stick. So you play a super spy who <laughs> who's infiltrating these facilities in the most stealthy ways possible, but he has no sight. And unlike other universes where he might get some sort of other advantage, heightened hearing, he has nothing. He's just completely blind, <laughs> trying to infiltrate places. And he gets shot in the first mission. <laughs> it's a game, short game. Game over. But the screen goes black because you're dead, but you think you're still playing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's up, more Cowboy 99 Hit that follow button. Uh, I've got a fever. Oh, dry. <laughs> Turn the machine off. <laughs> Throw a game out there. We'll spoof it. Oh, gosh. Um, uh, Throw a game out there and we'll spoof it. Um... Oh, that was a, that was a bad video game. I can't Metal Gear Solid. Mm. Uh, so you have you are one of those people with braces headgear, and uh, <laughs> it's just really about trying to survive adolescence with a s- severe detriment to your social. It's still a stealth game. You're just trying to avoid everyone you go to high school with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> I like it, and all the mechanics are still there because, like, a Solid Snake, you can hide in lockers and do all that sort of stuff. A cardboard box over your head is not out of place. If I close my eyes, nobody else can see me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. This is fun. I want to keep doing it for an hour. I like it. Maybe we'll continue in the after show. This is the biscuits. That was episode 32, guys. We had a lot of fun. We're going to go around and give out our information. I Social security numbers fun. and telephone numbers. I had some fun. Shut your mouth and give us your telephone number. Hello, my name is uh, Daniel Boone. Uh <laughs> <laughs> You can find me on the PlayStation Network at Buttzors. That's B-U-T-T-Z-O-R-Z, Buttzors. Hey, my name's Seth. It's nice to meet you. It's not Daniel. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, or you can find me on Xbox Live at Dongzors, D-O-N-G-Z-O-R-Z, Dongzors. Every once in a while, I'll do a stream. It's real rare. But maybe if I can build up some followers when I'm not actually streaming, then I can get on and people will watch me, and then I'll actually think it's worthwhile. Um, and for once, you'll have a friend in the world. That's right. But that is also Buttzors on Twitch. B-U-T-T-Z-O-R-Z. Buttzors. Kind of got off an on the whole lower body thing. What's up? All right. My name is Larry Allen Hunt II. I, he really is the second. It's awesome. It's true. My family didn't like Junior, I guess, so they went straight to the second. Seriously, you that. dodged the bullet there because some did. of your family might have called you Junior. Uh, Bull. I don't like that. <laughs> what, if they called you, what if they called you the second, though? That'd be kind of tough. Or I'm number start, two. I'm a, <laughs> call a dookie. <laughs> if you are a junior, I apologize. Not for joking about it, but I apologize that you're stuck being called junior. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, anyway, I am on Twitch and Twitter at Lair Hunts Zombies. L-A-R-H-U-N-T-S Zombies. And I've been firing up the old Google Plus lately if you want to add me there. Plus, Ooh, there you bringing it back, baby, just like MySpace. If you are interested in, in following us on MySpace, let me know and we'll fire. We'll start a MySpace page. Yeah, we'll make uh, Empty Vials the uh, the mod over that. I'll put on some eyeliner, take a selfie, complain about my parents. Empty Vials is, says he is a junior, but he's never been called junior. Consider yourself lucky, friend. All right. Are you done? I don't know. Is there anything else I could talk about? My name is Luke Croft. You can find me on PSN at Lodger Blackman and Xbox Live at Download a Hoagie. We are the Player 3 Podcast. Twitch.tv slash Player 3 Podcast. YouTube.com slash Player 3 Podcast. We're on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher. Leave us a review if you love us. Don't leave us a review if you hate us unless you want to say in the review that you love us. Thanks for tuning in. You're welcome. Play, we are the Player 3 Podcast. Play a three podcast, yeah. Exasperated sigh. P3P. It's the All right. three podcast, yeah. Welcome him to the after show. Hello and welcome to the Player 3 podcast after party. That's Player 3 Pizzle. <laughs> <laughs> this is the time where we like to interact <laughs> with our viewers. And so if you are in the chat, feel free to drop your questions. If you're following, If you're not following us yet... Drop us a follow, too. We'll give you a shout-out. We did get a couple follows this week. Thank you to 
N. Crichton. Seriously, have names we can read. And Valdemar, 1902, for the follows today. We did have a question from MP Viles up here that I told him we would get to. Let me see. And if you want to just drop a game in the comments there, we will spoof spoof it. it. Yes. Okay, legit question. I'm noticing more mods for consoles, mostly in the forms of stickers that you can put on your console to kind of color it without having to replace pieces. Do you think they'll eventually become modular like cell phones where they put out plastic portions that can snap onto uh, the consoles to customize it with little effort? Here's the thing. The 360 did that with the faceplates on the original 360. Did they have faceplates for the Elite? Uh, or the slim. I don't think so, but maybe. I think on the the elite was just the same console but black, so I think you could still do it on that. But on the slim, you couldn't. But yeah, with the three hundred and sixty, it was. Yeah. I don't know if we're ever going to see that again, though. If they make enough money, we will. Yeah. Uh, well, the thing is, is like you got to figure out what people are going to want to buy because there's not very many cell phones that do that anymore. Is it, what cell phones do that? Well, you can buy cases that snap on. So maybe you buy an Xbox case for durability. Yeah. When you when case. you take your uh, Xbox off roading, <laughs> a life proof case so I can play my Xbox in the tub. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see them bring that back. Uh, spoof Spyro the Dragon. That's a hard one for me. I don't know why. Um. Uh. Seth, can you spoof Spyro the Dragon? Uh. I think he's unspoofable. 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 Unforgettable. I got nothing. Usually I at least have a bad idea. Yeah, I don't really have anything either. Spyro the Dagron. So Spyro becomes a Trogdor-esque dragon with a beefy arm jutting out of the back of his neck for good measure. And he burninates the people, the villages, the peasants, and the natural cottages. That's roofed cottages. My bad. Burninating the countryside. Burninating the peasants. Burninating all the people. And in the, the thatch roof cottages! Uh, it was very loud. Let's see how loud. Oh, that's. We'll come back to it. <laughs> Baldur's Gate. So, Balder is a very bald guy. He's balder than most. Oh, here we go. That was pretty bad. That's good. Go ahead. Balder's Gate. Balder's Gate. Uh, bald-headed guy. He's got a gate. Uh, he doesn't let anyone in his gate. And you're trying to get into his gate because the rumor is Balder has produced a hair regrowing formula. And you are also a bald man. And you would like to obtain that formula. Uh... Uh, Destiny, uh, the spoof is it's actually Destiny's Child. Same universe, ah. but you're exploring the wreckage that took Left Eye. Trying to solve the <laughs> mystery. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> spoof The Witcher 3. I can't. We did that earlier. It's just not good. It's highly inappropriate. We changed some things. We changed a couple letters. One letter. Just one. One letter. Stitcher. The very first letter. The Stitcher 3. <laughs> Stitcher 3 podcast. You can find us on Stitcher, by the way. Uh, Empty Vile said something made him laugh out loud. I don't know what it was, though. Me neither. Hopefully it was the Baldur's Gate. I hope not. You deserve, you deserve a laugh. You deserve a laugh later. Tried. Well, what's happening here? What are you doing? I don't know. Are you reading my article? No. Oh, dang it. Why? I was looking at the trophies for The Witcher. Oh, by the way, I have a new article up on Gizarama. Not that you guys care. I'm just kidding, you do. I'm going to post it up here. Talking about Ubisoft's uh, E3 conference from last year and checking up on it. I go on a rant about Destiny in it. You should check it out. Everyone loves it. Everyone wants to be a part of it. Let's see, any more, uh, any more games here? Assassin's Cream. You are a member of the elite assassins in modern times, um, and you drive an ice cream truck. You primarily kill people by uh, poisoning their ice cream, but there are also situations where you might use the ice cream scooper to remove eyeballs uh, to get through locked gates that use an optical scanner, retina scan, um, that kind of thing. I like it. I like it. If you had to kill one person in this room, who would it be? Oh gosh, it's a thinner field right now. Um, Just say Seth. I would definitely kill Seth. I don't know. Uh, you said something to me earlier that made me want to kill you. What was it? 
Who, me? About Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'd kill Luke. I'm not saying it isn't good. It's good. You won't even give me a number score. Because I think... I don't give number scores on reviews. Why am I going to give number scores on a movie review? They're bullcrap. They're bogus. So, the scale means so nothing. So that I can be disappointed in you even further. It's arbitrary. Is that the last airbender? What, this? Yeah, it the is. The Legend of Korra? Is yeah. that the last airbender? It what? You know, ironically, no. Well, I mean, now she is, but that means that the first series, The Last Airbender, was not. She's not even an airbender. Oh, it's called The Legend of Korra. I just really messed up my whole geeky world. Uh, the spoof of the Madden games is that uh, it is like a Madden game, except it is um, it actually replicates football. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's blown away. They're like, what? What? What are you talking about? It looks like actual football. So, I think we're running out of steam, boys. I think the steam's gone. Mostly because you've been just looking at your phone the entire time. I'm day. sorry. What's You're wrong with you? Sorry. He's so doing? disappointed about Leanna still. Lee, I hadn't thought about her in a long time. What you is... thought about her earlier in the podcast. You sang the that song. That was the first time in a long time. For the first time in forever. Seth's thinking about a British girl. I think more about Cortana now. Hello. Gosh, Cortana's going to be so jealous. <laughs> okay. We're going to get out of here. Let's you get some go food, up there? my dogs. You want to go up there and hit the stop streaming button? Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Like, bye we're, gonna, we're, we're getting out of here now. Are we getting out of here? Yeah, we're getting out of here. Let's go grub right. it up. Where we want to go? I don't know. A game called Ola, where you play Mr. Chief. Yeah. Yes. All right. Says telephone number is 276.